here are the solutions for the probability mock exam. Um, for problem one, we have a uh, without replacement problem. These are can be done with just showing uh, multiplications uh, with probability ratios uh, multiplied times each other in cascade. I'm going to do this with a probability tree a diagram because maybe it's a little bit easier to picture. So um, basically we are going to have a box with red and green apples. We're going to take apples out. We're going to do three uh, picks and uh, each time we're putting, we're taking the apple out, we're not putting it back. So um, it's a little bit different than if we have the box and we draw an apple every time and we always put it back, then we have the same probability with each of the draws. In this case, we are uh, not putting the apple back, so each draw affects the next draws. So uh, usually with the probability tree diagram, you have layers. And in this case, you have three draws, so you're going to have three layers. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do every single one of the branches because um, usually the question is only asking about uh, some of the scenarios. So let's uh, we're going to draw all of them out initially, and then we'll see actually how many we're going to use. The first draw, you can have a red apple or you can have a green apple. Second draw, you can also have a red apple and a green apple. You're going to have um, that twice because you have the case where you do the second draw after you draw red or you draw the second draw after you draw green and then finally uh, the third draw you're going to have again red and green branching out from each one uh, each one of these um, existing branches. Uh, so Initially, you have 22 red apples and 23 green apples for a total of 25, right? Total 25. Um, so on the first draw, you would have a chance to get 22 out of 25 to get red and a chance of 3 out of 25 to get green, right? This is just the starting point. Um, and you're going to do that three times. But as you can see, if you draw a red apple out, now the number of apples you have is 21 red and 3 green. So that means the chance that you have of getting a red is actually 21 out of 20. Now how many total? It's 24 total. So you have 21 out of 24 chance to get red. You have a still have a 3 in the numerated chance to get out of 24. You still have 3 green apples, right? So... Uh, the numerator is still 3, but the denominator is now 24. And on the next draw, of course, the denominator is going to be 1 less because now you've drawn either a red or a green out. And in the case, if, if you've drawn another red out, now you only have 20 red left, and you still have 3 green, so there would be a chance, a 20 and 23 chance that you're going to choose red, and a still a 3 in 23 chance of getting green. So uh, that's basically how you're going to fill it out. Let's, add, let's see what exactly they're asking. Maybe we don't need to fill the whole thing out. The first two apples are green. What is the problem that the third apple is red? Okay, so uh, first two apples are green, so that means green, green. We're at this part of the probability tree. And then it asks, what is the probability that the third apple is red? So they're asking us what the probability is we're going to write here. So here we have, uh, we've arrived at green. So that means we have two greens left. And we have how many reds left? We still have a total of 22 red left. So that means the chance you're going to get red is 22 out of 24. The chance you're going to get green is 2 out of 24. And then we choose green again, right? Uh, and then, so now we have uh, 21, uh, oops, sorry. Now we still have 22 red, except now we have uh, just one green. And they're asking what, the, what is the probability that we're going to choose red now? And so it would be 22 out of 20. 
right? Because there's 23 total left. Okay. So let's see. Uh, so they, what is the probability the third apple is red? So the, the probability is going to be this. 22 out of 23. All right. Moving on. What is the probability that exactly two of the three apples are red? Two of the three apples are red. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at all the scenarios would end up with exactly two apples are red. Now, is this scenario um, two apples red? Well, it is two apples red. In fact, it's three apples red, but it says exactly two of the three apples are red. So that means not three. Okay, so not that one. Uh, what about this one? Red, red, green. Yeah, red, red, green is uh, three, two red. So that's good. Uh, what about this one? Red, green, red. Is that two reds? Yeah, it is. Uh, next one's red, green, green, so no. No, green, red, red. What about that one? Yeah, that one is also two reds. What about green, red, green? No. What about green, green, red? No. What about green, green, green? No. So we have three, uh, we have three, um, cases which, uh, turn out to be exactly two red. And so let's, uh, trace those out. It's that path, and this path, and this path. Those are, those are the three paths which have exactly two reds. And let's write out the probabilities for each one of those paths. So like this first path would be 22 out of 25 times 21 out of 24 times 3 out of 23. What about this one? This would be 22 out of 25, 3 out of 24, and then we need to fill in here. So now uh, we've drawn out a red and a green. So now what we have left are 21 red and 2 green. So uh, the chance that we're going to get a red are 21 out of 23. The chance that we're going to get a green is 2 out of 23. So um, this one is going to be 21 out of 23. And uh, let's see, this bottom one here, uh, after we drew green and red, we again, we have 21 red and we have tw 2 green. So we have a... 21 out of 23 chance for red and a 2 out of 23 chance for green. So we're going to have here 3 out of 25 times uh, 22 out of 24 times 21 out of 23. Let me rewrite that. 21 out of 23. Okay. And, and we're going to add all these up. Um, the new, the denominator is going to be 25 times 24 times 23, which is equal to 13, 18, 13, 800. It's the same for all. And the numerator in the top one is going to be 22 times 21 times 3, 1386. 22 times 3 times 21. This is also 1386. And the last one, also 1386. So we're going to add all three of these up, this, this, this. We're going to add them all up, and then we're going to get 1386 times 3, 4158, divided by 13800. Okay, so probably exactly two of the three apples are red is 4158. divided by 1380, 
13,800. Okay. And um, I could reduce this fraction to 693 divided by 2300, or I could divide it out, it's equal to 0 0.301, keep at least three significant figures. Okay, number two. Two restaurants, Center and New, sell fish rolls and salads. Uh, F is the event that uh, the customer chooses a fish roll. S is the event that he chooses a salad. And N is that he chose neither. In the center restaurant, the probability of fish is 0.31, salad 0.62, and neither 0.14. Show that uh, fish intersected with salad is 0 0.07. Okay, so um, to help you picture this, you might want to draw a Venn diagram. Um, in this case, one of the circles is F, the other circle is S. Um, neither is not the intersection that's actually outside, right? So let's see, it says neither is 0.14. We can write the probabilities as quantities, like in each of the regions that they represent. Probability of the fish is 0.31, and we're going to write it here. We, we're not going to write it here because it actually is the entire circle's contents, not just the bitten out apple shape. Okay. Now, using the, addi the addition rule, we can see that um, we could add the 0.31 to 0.62 and also add the 0.14 here, and we should get uh, a quantity bigger than one because of the intersection here. We're counting the intersection twice. So the addition rule basically says um, add the 0.31 to the 0.62 and then subtract out the part you're counting twice. Okay? So let's say we're going to get um, the addition rule is going to say the probability of F union S is equal to the probability of F plus the probability of S minus the intersection, the, the fish-shaped section, because you're counting it twice. And uh, do we know the probability of F inter uh, union S? Uh, well, we know the next best thing. We know what's outside of that. So we could find the probability of F union S as 1 minus 0 0.14, right? So that would be 0.86. The probability of F we know is 0.31. The probability of S we know is 0.62, which means the only thing we don't know is the intersection. And they say show that it is 0 0.07. We're not going to use that yet. So we're going to say, okay, we'll call it X. And then we'll see that uh, X is going to be equal to 0.31 plus 0.62, this is just algebra, minus 0.86. So it's going to be 0.31 plus 0.62 minus 0.86, and that gives us 0 0.07, which is what we were supposed to find. Okay. Given that a customer chooses a salad, find the probability that the customer also chooses a fish roll. So this is basically saying probability that the customer chooses a fish roll given that he chose a salad. And remember that the conditional probabilities can be written as this. Probability of the fish and salad is chosen over the probability that only the salad is chosen. And so we could, uh, we already know all these quantities. We know that, uh, F intersect salad is 0 0.07, and we know that the probability of the salad is um, 0.62. So now we can figure out that uh, 0 0.07 divided by 0.62 is equal to 0.113. Okay? Um, are F and S independent events? Justify your answer. Well, independent events basically is saying, hey, the if, you, if it's an independent event, then the intersection of the two 
uh, events is equal to the probability of each of the events multiplied times each other. So let's check if that's true. We know that the probability of inter f intersect s is 0 0.07, right? We also know that the probability of f is 0.31 and the probability of s is 0.62. So if we find that uh, this equality is true, then uh, then they are independent events. So 0.31 times 0.62, is this going to be equal to 0 0.07? No, it's equal to 0.1922. So this intersection, or this, uh, these two quantities are not equal to each other, so they are not independent. And the reason why is because the probability of the fish times the probability of um, Salad is not equal to the probability of fish intersect salad. So they're saying that those two things, the probability that you're going to pick fish and the probability that you're going to have salad also is not independent. Okay. Kind of makes sense, right? People who choose fish tend to be worried about health and um, salad also. People are uh, like healthy eaters. So it makes intuitive sense, but don't go by that. You're going to use the um, this law or rule to figure out if things are independent or not. So at the new restaurant, probability of n is equal to 0.14. That's the probability that you'll choose neither fish or nor um, salad. Twice as many customers choose a salad as choose a fish roll. Choosing a fish roll is independent of choosing a salad. Okay, so this is a totally different place. So at this restaurant, the choosing fish is independent of choosing salad. We discovered at the first restaurant that it's not, right? Okay. Find the probability that a fish roll is chosen. Now, did they give us probabilities for the new restaurant? No, they didn't. They just gave for the center restaurant, right? So here, they're expecting us to do everything just with the fact that probability of new is equal to point, or neither is 0.14. So if the probability of neither is 0.14, one thing that we do know is the probability of fish union salad is equal to 1 minus 0.14, which is equal to um, 0.86, okay? And um, <clears throat> they say that twice as many customers choose salad as choose fish. So the probability that someone chooses salad, twice as many customers choose salad as choose a fish roll. So you could write this statement, which is true. Twice as many people uh, choose salad as choose fish. So two times the probability of fish is equal to the probability of salad. Uh, now, we also know that um, that uh, choosing a fish roll is independent of choosing salad at the new restaurant. So that means that the probability of salad times the probability of fish is equal to the probability of salad intersect fish. And then they want us to find the probability that the fish roll is chosen. Okay. So uh, we got, we're going to use two equations here. One is we're going to use the independence equation, which is this. The other one, we're going to use the addition equation, which we've already used at the top. We know that the probability of F intersect S is equal to the probability of F plus the probability of S minus the fish shape in the middle, which we don't want to count twice. Um, and we know that the F union S is 0.86. And we know that the probability of F and S, let's see, the probability of F we know that the probability of S is equal to 2 times the probability of S. 2 times the probability of f minus the intersection. Now, we might say, oh, we don't know the intersection, but we, we do know that the intersection is equal to the probability of s times the probability of f using the fact that the probability of s is equal to 2 times the probability of f. We could write 
2 times the probability of f times the probability of f is equal to the intersection. So now we're going to write that here. We're going to write 2 probability of f. We could put squared because it's multiplied times each other twice, right? So now we're going to have 0.86 equals 3 probability of f minus 2 probability of f squared. Uh, now this is um, a quadratic, so we could, uh, and I'm going to, instead of writing probability of f, which is kind of uh, awkward, I'm going to write x instead. So I'm just going to write, uh, let's see, 2x squared minus 3x plus 0 0.86 equals 0. So now I can just solve for x, and that would give me the probability of f, right? And the way I could solve for x would be, uh, in this case, kind of hard to factor because there's a decimal there, but we could use the quadratic formula so we know that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? And so we know that a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to 0.86. And after a lot of algebra, you will get... So putting this in the quadratic formula, I would get two possible answers. One of the answers would be 0.386, and the other answer would be 1.11. Now, in the case of probabilities, we know we can discard uh, this uh, answer, um, 1.11, because probabilities only range from 0 to 1. They can't be greater than 1, so that's not an answer. So we're left with the probability of fish is 0.386. Okay, so this was a, a good problem because it shows um, how the addition equation, which is uh, this one, and the independence equation, which is this one, can just turn into an algebra problem um, to be solved.